that's how quickly things can change, man. As soon as it entered the scope frame, basically I pulled the trigger and that's the end of it. There's something you guys don't know about me and that I was actually married in a castle in Scotland. If you look really, really closely, if it'll focus right there, that little guy there, that's me. And that's uh, my wife who thinks she's a princess. That's gonna segue perfectly into today's sponsor, Established Titles. She, she overheard, I said, get ready. I have a surprise for you. For I have a package for Holden and me. Oh. Which is gonna be a, oh, a little bit great. of a little bit of a, a throw, <laughs> a, a little bit of cake in the face. Okay, okay swap, swap that over. Have a look at that. So you own one square foot of land in Edelson, Scotland, Aww. which entitles you to the title Lord. Lord Holden Anton Leclerc, and you can read through that. But it's got your plot and all the plot information right there. You are to refer to me as Lord Christopher Philip. <laughs> And Holden as Lord Holden Anton. Bearing witness to the purchase of your plot or plots of dedicated land in Scotland. So we can put this on the wall and you can celebrate our lordship. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of saying, oh boy, and oh my gosh, now you say, good lord. Good lord. <laughs> there you go. Pretty cool. Yeah, we're, we're now lords. Lord of the Manor. I thought that was the present. The present is now you're you're associated with lords. Mm -hmm. You're in the presence of lords. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, with efforts through One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, every order is going to supply one tree towards reforest efforts globally. Also, if you guys use my code Beardsman, that'll get you an additional 10% off. So it makes a great gift. Use established title slash Beardsman. And then the first 200 people that use my link will get a plot of land next to me so we can effectively be neighbors. This is a great cause. It makes a great gift for somebody who has literally everything. So we now own the square foot there, which means that- Which means we get to go back. Well, yeah, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> to visit we'll our vi land. To visit our land. What do you think? That's cool. Pretty cool? So jealous. Are you? <laughs> yep. Christmas present for Courtney. Oh, poo up there. Yeah, the raccoon poop. They think I'm not home. Uh, so really. they make a home for themselves. They should put like a raccoon home. Like I said, that's the first level, right? <laughs> that, that I kept that there so that they could poop on that level. Why do they go up there to poop? I don't know. Poop with a view. I'll give you this too. You can choose what you want to do, but we need some brushing in. Whatever you whatever you want to do, I wasn't sure. But just like that, maybe a little bit longer than that. Pretty sappy. Are you saving them so you don't get sappy? Uh, maybe I'll use them. <laughs> but you might as well, mine are already <laughs> sappy. All right, Don here and Kevin here from Modern Self Reliance. You guys saw the salt, the salt licks here. Uh, lots of leaves fell on top of it. Uh, we can check the trail camera. There's deer coming by. But uh, the main objective for me to do here today is I want to get the back of the squirrel stand set up so that I can hunt out of it. Uh, we got a little bit of the bow season left and then we have the uh, shotgun deer. That's my main concern. So we've got some pressure treated lumber here, but I ran out when I originally made it. And so the back of the, um, the backside never got finished. Kevin's gonna try to appreciate my craftsmanship on this stand. So the raccoon doesn't poop on that side for some reason, but he sure likes to poop on this side. And of course, this is the side we're gonna be working on. We can brush this area in here to form a nice sheltered spot. Kevin's getting the poop out. Bye-bye, poopies. Get rid of all the poopies yet? I think so. I don't know if there's a raccoon pooped in this one or not. Move that. Ah. Did you get liquid? Nice. I'm gonna pull this out because it's kind of in the way here. We'll pitch those out of the way. So this is where we ran out of wood here. Is this section here so I could never really like sit on this side. We're good all the way across the bracing. You don't trust it? <laughs> you haven't sped any time up here yet. Why don't you form fit the tree like you would? You wanna describe it? No, it's okay. It doesn't have to be that good. As long as I can't put my foot in there and die. Yeah. 
What if I what if I step there and die? You can't. I challenge you to break that with anything you can see up there, up here. What about in 10 years? Um, the tree might fall down. I don't, they don't think that's gonna break in 10 years. All right, just screw it in then. We got two chairs here. You wanna make me a roof so that when it rains, I don't get wet? Tucking it in so nothing's really sticking out. It's so rocky still. That's better. So you know if I put this chair like that and leave it permanently, a raccoon's gonna take a turd right on the middle of it, right? Probably. Can you throw a couple of screws in the ladder? <laughs> so I don't lose it. I'm drinking Sammy spot there, so when I'm sitting down, I can put my stuff there. It's perfect. It is pretty well brushed, brushed in already, but doesn't hurt to add more to fill in the gaps. You impressed by my tree stand or it's whatever? <laughs> it's functional. It's functional? Can you imagine that you could put a cot here base, ba barely and then I just need a roof and you sleep here. Good, this is, I think we'll, as children we built better <laughs> forts than this one. Better than that? Yeah, I think so. We had like wood stove in it and stuff. Oh, you. oh that's a lot. Is that a lot? No, you're just weak. You got a couple long ones? This is where I spend a lot of my time just sitting. And then if I'm gonna do a bow shot, I'm going to be sh standing up to shoot, probably. So when I stand up to shoot, I don't want to be silhouetted here. I need room for uh, standing here. If I want to shoot off this side, I got to be able to lean over. I'm going to uh, spread a little bit of corn. And it's, the corn's not for the deer. <clears throat> corn is to keep myself amused maybe attract some squirrels while I'm waiting for deer to come. Hoping to be able to shoot some with the slingshot. Have you been up there, Don? No. Go cool. up. This is the side wasn't finished yet, but I can, I got another spot for another person on this side. Yeah. Just tucked in there. I cut, cut it off. Yeah, I cut the legs way off yeah. and I cut the front so that they were so a little longer. Yeah. So it's reclining. <laughs> You can spend hours up here easily. Oh yeah, it's so, especially on a day like today. It's beautiful. Kind of trim, trim a little things here just to get them out of the way. The Browning Trail camera, kind of, it's not quite on the salt lick, but it's nearby. And I have it actually facing the tree stand. I'm actually kind of curious if I put it facing the tree stand, if I'll get, you know, activations from myself up in the tree, but I'm, I'm guessing not. Like the tree stand is way over there, so I'm guessing like once I get up inside of there, it's probably not going to be detecting me. All kinds of different animals, lots of coyotes and things like that. You never know what's going to come by. I've had a couple of small bucks in the neighborhood. I've also had some, uh, some does and also some raccoons and all kinds of other things. But uh, you know, I got a pretty good shot range anywhere in this vicinity here. And I'll change the batteries up and then I got one more thing to do before I can e even start hunting. It's a company called Jurassic Rock. You guys can uh, check that company out. I'm pretty impressed by that. I'm gonna keep the salt lick going for a long, long time. There's all kinds of fancy products that you guys can use for hunting anything, really. I mean, the sky's the limit when it comes to indulging your passions. But there's also some very inexpensive ways, and I alluded to this uh, in an earlier video. I told you guys how I would make, my, how I make my mock scrape. First thing you need, is a good overhanging branch right here. You see the plastic cabins right there. But I did start this a while ago. I mean, you could buy like deer lure, you can buy deer urine, you can buy all kinds of deer scents. But all I do is pee in them. And that's it, that's set. We've got ourselves a little scrape here. Um, that's leading up to our tree stand. We've got our salt lick from Jurassic Rock. We're all set to hunt. So hopefully I got something to share 
about this deer season. So let's get going. Well guys, pretty uneventful uh, second hunt. Uh, last night I went on a hunt, as you guys saw, but uh, it kind of ended funny. <laughs> I had everything packed up, it was getting dark, so I didn't get any footage. But um, you know how I brought the apples and I put them right there? Well, as I was coming down the ladder, see I'm on the ladder right now, on the ladder, I was hearing something, the leaves were really dry, so I could hear something walking up that way and then 
after a while I figured out it was a deer. So I was going to wait on the ladder here to at least let it walk by so that it didn't bust me and figure everything out. Well, sure enough, the wind going that way and uh, the deer caught wind of my apple bunch here. <laughs> so I'm halfway down the ladder at this point and the deer is coming straight over toward me, right back here where the apples are. So anyway, the deer comes all the way in and I'm on the ladder here and it starts eating apples. So <laughs> now I'm in a little bit of a bind here and I can see its head coming up and down and here like it's eating apples, like it's mashing down and mowing down on apples. Um, I had my headlamp on, uh, not turned on yet. And I'm just standing here watching this deer trying to keep everything straight. I got my, you know, my bow in my hand and a uh, backpack on. Just trying to stay pretty quiet and still. Hoping that this deer gets enough of fill and then takes off. Well, after 20 minutes of me standing on this ladder, <laughs> finally I'm like, I, I have enough, had enough. So I switched my headlamp on hoping that, you know, I can get, get a, kind of the deer in the headlights kind of reaction from this deer. And then maybe I can, I don't know, I have no idea. I wanted to see what it was, make sure it was a deer for sure. So I turn it on and it's sure enough, it's that six point buck that was over at the Salt Lake. Uh, but he was by himself, so I don't know where his other buddy went. So anyway, figuring at least I turn the light on and this deer is going to take off. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> it just kind of stands there, uh, deer in the headlights kind of thing. Like, it's like 15 yards away here like a stone throw. I could literally jump on the back of this deer and it's just standing there looking at me. Well, looking at the light. So eventually I'm like, okay, enough of that. So I start climbing down the ladder a little bit and the deer doesn't even really freak out. This deer is as dumb as a bag of rocks. He kind of goes off this way into uh, the spruce trees a little bit. I can take a couple more steps and he goes down a little bit more or I go down a little bit more. The deer kind of circles back it comes back towards the apples and at this point I'm like forget it so I just make my way down um, the ladder and I just kind of hightail it out because I didn't want the deer to really figure that the stand was here that's the whole point of me not going down right away anyway <laughs> the deer is a beggar rock so I thought I would come back out here and hopefully it would come back because you know what I haven't been seeing any other deer so if that six point it comes back uh, I'm gonna take them or a doe. I don't really care. So anyway, as you can see I got the bow the bow gear out, but uh, didn't see anything this morning So I'll uh, stop here and resume my hunt the next time you see me out But I thought it would be entertaining enough for you guys to hear that story and too bad I didn't have any footage, but all my camera gear was put away in the backpack and I obviously couldn't get it off But anyway, you never know what will happen in the deer woods So based on the number of activations I was getting on the uh, trail camera, I, I pretty much figured I was going to see this guy, uh, but I was kind of surprised by just how active he was, like all day long on the camera. And this is the first glimpse I got out in the field. And I was sure it was just going to kind of mess around the field, but then he started to approach the uh, apple pile. And so I just flicked on the Tacticam here and you could see he'd started to get comfortable, but the problem was I had my really super expensive Rage, brand new Rage Broadhead on the uh, on the bow, so I didn't really want to launch a, a pretty expensive uh, arrow at this guy. So while you're watching, I'm actually trying to get the uh, a new arrow knocked, and I think this is kind of agitating the coyote. He knows what's going on, or should I say chupacabra? This is like. If you just saw this whizzing by, you would say that it was it was like some kind of demented animal. And there's no way this, this coyote is going to survive the winter, like without any fur like this. So 
I decided that when I started hunting deer, if this guy came in, I would definitely put it out of its misery. It would be a long, cold winter without any fur. So as you're watching, what I'm trying to do is quietly exchange arrows, which is like easier said than done, especially because this coyote is like, he's maybe 15 yards, like the apple pile is about 10, 15. And so I'm, I'm try, trying to really, really quietly do that. And then of course I gotta, you know, remove the bow from the hook and see it gets agitated right there. Cause I start to make a bit of a more remove. And then I'm now, now I'm worried that thing's gonna take off. So I gotta get drawn up real fast. And then I gotta judge distances. And cause this, this animal's really small and the distance is kind of weird and it starts to make its way away. Well, I take my shot and uh, end up being super low. This, this is a, like a tiny coyote. Here's another view on trail camera. And you can see the arrow way too low. But anyways, I'll get another crack at this guy. I just remember guys, I never gave you an update about the rat trap I put up here. I got from Princess Auto. Princess Auto's got a ton of stuff, including like all kinds of trap supplies, but I also got household supplies. Anyway, I put it up there because we had the squirrel chewing in through the roof. And it's funny, but what happened is because I put it here, it didn't have enough clearance. So I actually had a squirrel trip it or something. And then it opened up and then it hit the roof there and it didn't completely close. Um, but thankfully there hasn't been a lot of squirrel activity since we put up the wire meshing uh, and tucked it in there. So that's one problem that we don't have to worry about too much, but uh, you guys know the log cabin. We'll probably do some more experiences out here as the uh, as the weather sets in, the winter sets in. But uh, anyway, I wanted to give you the update about the rat trap situation. Oh, there goes that guy. Blech. Well, not much action so far on the deer hunt. I was out here this morning and uh, as I was walking in, which is un not unusual for this spot, I actually busted a deer. I think it was up in the field area here, but because the leaves are so dry, it could hear me walking in. I got a cold, so not 
be going too, too good. And then a couple seconds ago, my, my best friend, the coyote, who's stealing all my apples, this is the mangiest, ugliest coyote I've ever seen in my life. And I had intended to either trap it to put it out of its misery, or if it walked by, shoot it. And uh, sure enough, about the same time it comes in every day, um, I got it. So, coyote down. Um, I don't really want to go handle this guy, but I got a set of gloves. But I can't leave it there. It's right on the apple pile. So, I'm going to go down and move it, even though i got like about an hour left or so before the deer start moving. Well, the deer can move any time now. It's a rut now. But... Uh, Let's go have a look at this guy and get it out of the way. It's a nasty, nasty animal. just gives me the heebie-jeebies that guy that guy's got a really bad case of the mange and uh, it's very contagious between canine species so you can actually well you could transmit it to a household pet as well so oh gross and then of course once one animal in the pack gets it then they can all get it too I've seen other coyotes around here, even on my trail camera, and they're healthy. Uh, but that guy must have got kicked out and been working hard trying to stay alive, that thing. Moving all the time, all day. Like, I've never seen a coyote move around that much. Just trying to stay fed. But uh, I know he's not benefiting on a pack. So any food he gets, he's got to get on his own. I actually saw on the trail camera. Um, him catching, it looked like a mouse just out front here by the apples after the apples ran out. But you know, if a coyote's like desperate to come in for apples all the time, you know it's hungry. And when it's moving all hours of the day too and very visible, oh, gross. But uh, definitely worth taking out. And uh, you know, as much as I don't really like the coyotes that much to be so abundant, I can see more coyotes here than deer lately it's um it's nice to at least have a healthy population of coyote where that mange isn't getting spread over to you know our domestic our domestic pets anyway i'll go in here now and see what's going on i do have some activity from a little four point buck uh a mature doe which is i think what i spooked this morning because she carried on quite a bit and uh, you never know it's the rut so we could have a giant buck come out here at any time.
happened this morning and uh, before light I had a couple of deer walking by but I couldn't see them because it was so dark and then last night I had a pretty good buck out in the field and I had the scope on him but uh, it's a little bit outside of my shooting range I don't know maybe 75 yards maybe 50 yards I don't know it's hard to tell but uh, I wasn't comfortable with the shot there's lots of branches here so uh, I'm gonna take the rake brought the rake in this morning with me because I was noticing as I was walking in the deer were busted me at least yesterday morning this morning I was able to sneak in maybe earlier maybe quieter or maybe the deer just weren't right here but I really need the deer to be moving like 10 minutes later through this area and in years past that's been the case where you know an hour after sunlight which is about now and the deer will will move through or they'll bed over there for a little bit and then they'll make the way back over here but this year for some reason they're moving a lot earlier it's a lot clearer though so the daylight comes in a lot brighter so they could be that they're just trying to get out of the fields earlier and then back to bed and cover so we have a few days left and it's supposed to get a little bit cloudier a little bit nastier so it could be that the deer stay up on their feet a little bit longer but uh, you know the deer activity has been good it's just been at the wrong times and the slightly the wrong locations if that buck had to come through here instead of going out in the field and cutting it across I would have had a shot for sure anywhere inside this bush here I could shoot and those deer that were milling around this morning were basically right right below the stand here and then over there so they kind of split direction so I think maybe it was a buck that way and a doe that way but that's just guessing on their behavior and the fact that I saw that buck go back this way and he's probably headed back to bed over here but uh, we'll keep at it Well guys, that happened super fast. A deer came in and it was gonna go right by the stand and I actually heard it for about, I don't know, 20 minutes. I was actually just resting, taking a break and uh, the deer was breaking sticks and stuff behind me and I heard it and I'm like, that's ah, gotta be a deer but I couldn't see it for the life of me. I kept looking around. I'm just gonna throw some adobo spice on here. Get it nicely marinated inside there. And, uh, you know, I just kept waiting for it to show up. And then I heard the leaves come toward me. I heard, um, you know, definitely sound like a deer. So all I could do was get lined up. And I was within, like, I don't know, man. Like, it basically came just below the stand, five, maybe 15 yards tops, maybe 10. And I just had the scope lined up and as soon as it entered the scope frame, basically I pulled the trigger and that's the end of it. So that's how quickly things can change, man. They can change super fast. 
So we're gonna throw some oil in the pan here and we're just gonna do it really basic. This is how normally I, I do my venison, hot oil, wadobo spice, and we're just gonna quick fry it. Well, the Bass Pro Shops food plot is now covered in snow. We had a little bit of a flash, flash freeze and precipitation ended up as snow. Uh, but what happened to the uh, Bass Pro Shops uh, food over seed, we have a uh, mixed chicory and rapeseed and some clover and everything. Obviously it's buried, but I noticed a lot of the uh, plants here that were growing up are snipped off, like a lot, not just a little bit, a lot. And I didn't see any deer sign or any big animal signs. There's some raccoon sign through here, but I really couldn't figure out what was coming through and eating the food plot over seed. So what I did was I checked out, I put the trail camera on here and uh, I'll show you guys exactly what's going on. But uh, it turns out it's a rabbit. It's not surprising that I didn't get a ton of deer activity over on this side of the property, just because there's a lot of activity from humans. But I did want to see exactly what was happening. Uh, if you guys check out Bass Pro Shops, they got all kinds of things. And it's not just hunting and fishing. They've got household supplies. They've got camping supplies. They've got housewares. They've got clothing. They've got just a ton of different stuff. So obviously we're making use of the outdoor supplies here. And this is just overseed, but uh, I, they've got a ton of stuff. So just doing it pretty straight forward I want hot oil and uh, just venison with and that's it so I want to talk a little bit about that uh, coyote I shot man that thing had a death wish and I'm glad I got it out of the population because it was not gonna survive the winter that thing had so much mange uh, that it definitely wasn't gonna survive and it brought me back to thinking about like chupacabra you know lots of people think there's there's jackrabbit that's kind of got the mange too I wonder if like a coyote or some kind of other animal has got like a really bad disease that makes people think that they see something that doesn't actually exist. So I definitely wiped out a chupacabra when I took that coyote out. So that's going to be good for the coyote population. And uh, Kevin and Don are maybe going to show up and grab some here. Kevin's holding the camera for me right now so I know he's going to have a bite. It's all hard earned and uh, that kind of wraps up my deer season. That's like one minute, two minutes out of the side. Just seared the lock in the flavor. And the best thing to do, I find with venison, if you can't age it outside, age it in your fridge. Like freeze it, take it out, leave it wrapped, let it sit in your fridge for a week or two before you eat it. That's gonna make it super tender. I can see that's not chewy at all. Falls off the bone. <coughs> Something smells delicious. Yep, you're just in time. Wow, thank you. Can we get this I didn't, I didn't lick the fork. It might be lava. No, it's good. Is it's it, a good temperature. Okay, good temp? Yep. Oh my God. Tender. Juicy. Right, just with wadobo, a little bit of olive oil. You got you got the nice red red juices flowing, red so juices you know it's, a, it's, it's uh, not overdone. No, it's delicious. What do you think? Scale it's it one tender. to 10. It's a 10. 10, wow. All right, Kevin's turn. All right, Kevin's up. I'm gonna give him a, a little bit extra cooked. Is it cooked? It's over. It's my, that might little, not. A little bit extra. My question of the day. Yeah. Well, that's nice and crispy, actually. Well, that's perfect. Look, it's not too pink inside. Just pink enough. That's good. Isn't it? What cut is that? That's the back strap. Mm. It's the best part. Well, it's, yeah, it's the best part. It's got like a crunchy, like bacon. It's like a solid nine. I, like bacon's probably 10 and this is like a solid nine. I like it. I, you know what, if it was crispier, a little crispier, just around the edges. I want that crispy crunchiness, but then the soft and it is pretty good. Crow is good. The crow is good, yeah. The crow, yeah, because well, it was wrapped in bacon. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Maybe we need to wrap this in bacon, but it's already a 910, so you don't have to do much to it. Add some adobo, add some, uh, add a quick sear and that's it. I believe that's the best venison I've ever had. And you're gonna get another piece. Wow. That earns you the last piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you. No, it's just melt in your mouth. That's great. Yeah, perfect. Mm. I'm still still eating it, which is, is quite surprising. That's how good it is. It's You haven't thrown it in the bush yet? Well, I don't throw it in the bush, but I usually be like, all right, oh, that's enough. I just I just sort of ate a little bit, so I'm not exactly hungry. So but I'm still eating it, which is unusual for me. It's really good. Well, I'm working on a couple more videos, guys. You're gonna have to stay tuned for that. 
I've got uh, I got to harvest all the fish out of this pond because while well, it's starting to freeze over and we actually uh, want it to freeze over because we want to be able to skate on it and I'm a, a little bit concerned about the fish too throw some feet in there but they they haven't been super active anymore I don't know if it's like the water quality it's kind of turned muddy um, or if it's just the temperature drop in which case they're just out of feeding mode so if they're not going to feed anymore and they're not going to get any fatter and we want to be able to skate on this you know the aerator has to be unplugged otherwise it's going to keep the water open and then we're not going to be able to skate on it so that's the trick right now so watch out for that video uh, the aerator that's funny the aerator just turned on i was wondering what that big bubble came up for but we got enough just enough sun to get that aerator going and uh the other thing i'm working on is a squirrel slingshot hunt so i've got a, a kind of an obstacle course set up out in the woods there and uh, that'll, that video will be coming up a little bit later too. But you can see like the fish aren't coming up here. So let me know down below how you think I should harvest all these fish. I don't know if I can catch them all out for certainty to make sure that they're all out. Uh, I can gill net. Um, we all thought, we thought about draining the pond as well. So those are a couple of options, but let me know what you guys think. Obviously a bow fishing is not gonna work because they're not coming up anymore. Hopefully they're not all dead on the bottom, but the only way to find out is to tune in on the next time when I make my uh, full pond harvest fishing video. So that's a success. I'll see you guys in the next one.